Hey guys and welcome back for another tutorial. Today I'm going to be starting a new series and this is going to be the Christmas Jammy series and um, I'm going to be using a pattern by a company called Ellie and Mac and this is the one that we're going to be making and the great thing about this pattern is that it is completely free so you can go over to Ellie and Mac and download this pattern. This is what the uh, front cover of the pattern looks like so I'm really excited to share this pattern with you guys because it's absolutely beautiful there's a few different variations there's a nightgown version and then the long sleeve shirt and long sleeve pants this is a grow with me pajamas so the cuffs are going to be a little bit longer so it kind of lasts longer for them um, but I'm going to start with the pants in this video <clears throat> So this is the pattern assembly that you'll get and it actually will tell you how to assemble the pattern. It is 26 pages, it's massive, but um, it's a great pattern especially to make some Christmas jammies for everyone in your family up till 6 months to 14 years. So I'm going to be making the size 6 pants today for my son and so I'm just going to show you the pattern pieces that I'm going to cut out. These are, there's only two pieces that you're going to need for the pants. Um, there's the Grow With Me ankle cuffs and then the actual pants pattern. I haven't cut out the size 6 just yet. I actually just left this as it was and then I traced my own pattern using this just to save on printer ink. So I would take like a a long piece of uh, paper or I would glue or tape my you know regular piece of paper together and then I just kind of laid it on top and then I um, I just marked it because you can see through you can see the ink through so I, ma I made a size 6 pattern for Jack and, um, and but I did cut this one out for the size 6 so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start by cutting out our fabric so for pajamas, I'm going to be using a double brushed poly. It's a beautiful fabric that is so silky, smooth, oh, so buttery and perfect. Um, you would definitely find these in um, a lot of leggings are made out of double brushed poly because they're just so silky and beautiful on your body. And it's nice and light, so it's not too hot at night. So I'm going to make the body of the pants out of this beautiful red and black buffalo plaid. And then I'll make the cuffs out of this black double brush poly. <clears throat> so we're gonna first cut out our cuffs. So with the double brush poly, we have the selvage, which is the, you know, the finished edge and usually the fabric will be, um, the, the longest stretch will be from um, selvage to selvage. So I'm going to take the fabric and I'm going to fold it in half just so that I can double up because we're going to need two cuffs. Like that. Make sure, see if it fits. Okay, we'll put some of our pattern weights down on top and I just use these big washers. You can get them at the hardware store, they're super cheap. And then I'll take my rotary cutter and my ruler and because this is just a square piece, um, a ruler will help to make sure that everything is. Usually if there's a straight edge on my pattern, I'll just bust out the ruler because it'll just make sure I get a nice even line. Alright. And when you're working with a solid color in knit fabrics, um, to find out which side is the right side you'll notice that the corner or the edges will curl and they'll curl towards the right side so this is the right side because it is 
curling towards it. So you just want to keep that in mind. And you can, you can kind of tell, but sometimes you can't. With this one, because it's black, the right side is just like just a hair darker. So, um, but it's very easy to, uh, depending on the lighting in your room, to not be able to see the right or wrong side. So just to keep, you know, that little tip, if it rolls towards it, that's the right side. <clears throat> okay, so now we have two cuffs. And now we can cut out our main pants pattern. So I have this beautiful double brushed buffalo plaid, which is just, of course, the most perfect Christmas fabric. I kind of folded it weird. So making sure that we're going from selvage to selvage, and the selvage you can kind of tell has this, this like kind of holes in it and stuff. <laughs> and we're going to, with this pattern, it's actually, we want you to cut out mirrored image. So instead of, you know, it can be a little bit confusing if you cut out each piece separately so to make sure that you get a mirrored image of your pattern piece you want to do exactly what we did the last time and just fold the fabric and then you can cut out both sides at the same time and i'm going to speed this part up because the fabric is so silky that it you know there's wrinkles in it and it sometimes takes a little bit of time just to get everything nice and smooth and perfect before we lay our pattern down. So now we have our pattern on top and because we put our fabric with the right sides together, you can do right sides, wrong sides together, it doesn't matter when you fold it. We will have a mirrored image of our pattern piece once it's cut out. So we're gonna go ahead and just cut it out. And there we have it. <clears throat> so that's all we need in terms of pattern pieces is these two and then we have our cuff pieces and then we need we're gonna need some elastic for our waist waistband um so i recommend like one inch um but it depends on i think it says in the pattern what exactly you need it says the the length of elastic but I think it's kind of your preference how wide you want it to be but you just need to like think about what you're if you're making a you know pajamas for a six month old I'd probably do like a half of um, a half an inch and then kind of go up from there to three quarters of an inch to one inch to if it's a you know 14 size 14 then I would go up to maybe one and a half inch um, <clears throat> but for size 6 I do prefer the one inch so I'm going to I'll use this one and because of the way that we're going to do this waistband 
using a regular elastic will work fine. There is another version which you might have in your stash that looks like this. And this is a, it kind of, um, it doesn't fold on itself. So if you were gonna do a casing, then you would use this. But because we're gonna be sewing this directly in, we can just use our regular elastic, which is good because I think that the regular elastic is cheaper. So you can use the you know non-folding one, of course, if you don't have just regular elastic, but you don't have to make a special trip for it. So in the pattern, it says that I need um, it says that I need 21 inches, but I measured my son and I'm going to make it 20 inches just because he's a little skinny boy. Um, so I'm just going to cut 20, 20-ish inches just to, okay, so we have our elastic and that is all that we need for the pants and we can start to sew everything together. So we're going to use the serger. Um, but you can of course use a regular sewing machine. I would just use a zigzag stitch um, to make sure that you don't have any um, pop stitches. You need to use a stretch stitch when it comes to using this type of fabric, especially this type of garment because it will most likely be stretched on to your child. That just, you know, to have a stretch stitch means it will stretch with the fabric and um, and yeah so I but I do have my serger so we're gonna use that today okay okay so I'm trying to get the best angle so hopefully this um, works this is my serger if you haven't met officially this is my brother um, 655d it's very similar to the 1034 so if you're in the market I would definitely recommend a brother because they are great easy to to thread I put some black thread in this one I have clips and pins because especially with knits pins is definitely um, a must-have so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna prepare my elastic which is just a matter of putting the two raw ends together and we will just sew <clears throat> I'm still slightly sick so sorry so just like that now we have one long loop and I am going to quarter it so I'm just going to use a marker kind of mark those quarters we don't need it obviously for a little bit but it's going to be all done and ready to go when it's time so now I'm going to take my cuffs and we'll work on that so <clears throat> you need to figure out which way is your right or wrong way so if it's laying nice and flat like mine if you just like kind of stretch it then you'll see okay this is the this is where it's rolling towards which means that's our right side and we're gonna fold it lengthways And we're just going to feed it into the machine. <clears throat> and it's just going to make like a sleeve. I'll get the other one. That's the great thing about surging is that you can kind of chain stitch everything. So just kind of keep feeding it in okay and with sergers um, it does cut off a little bit of the fabric so you can kind of just stay along the line guide so that you don't cut anything off um, but if you want to you can do that also especially if you have like jagged edges you can kind of just uh, cut it off just to make it nice and even <clears throat> 
So there is our two cuffs. Just cut them apart. And then we can work on the main pants. I just like to do all my large sewing and then we can move on. So we're just gonna take our pant leg and I like to go down to the ankle and I'll just line up the edges. And this is gonna be sewing the inseam of the pant leg, so the longest seam. <clears throat> and if you wanna clip and pin all this stuff, you can totally do that. Um, with the double brushed, it's pretty, pretty uh, sticky, so it, once you kind of get it into place, it kind of stays. So, but if it's your first time, it's no shame in pinning as you go. I kind of just sew a little bit and adjust. right up to the crotch area. And then we'll take the second pant leg and again we'll go to the ankle area and line up that corner first. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> And then just <clears throat> feed it in. So now we have both of our pant legs done. So as you can see, it is forming a leg. <laughs> so now we're gonna take our cuffs and I'm gonna install my cuffs now. So you're going to take your little sleeve and with the raw edge here, I'm just gonna put those raw edges together and it's going to fold it in half. Just folding it on top of itself and keep the seam straight on top of itself. And you can put a little clip there and then I just kind of make it all nice and you just want all your raw edges kind of lined up together <clears throat> and we can finesse more when we go to put this on each pant leg but I'm just going to take my second one and do the same thing so you're just kind of going to take it and then fold it down and then you have your own a little cuff. And this is a longer cuff because then you have that option of folding it up when they are little and then as they grow, you can fold it down and get a little bit more life out of your, out of your pajamas, which is always nice because they grow like weeds sometimes. <clears throat> okay, so the edges, the raw edges are nicely lined up. So we're going to take one pant leg and we're going to put it inside 
of, so I'm just gonna go like that and put it inside the ankle area. And that seam that's on the cuff, I'm gonna line that up with the inseam of the pant leg. And this is usually when I will pin or clip. And you wanna make sure that your little seam there is lined up and that really makes it look nice and finished and professional when you're able to get that seam lined up so you want three layers of fabric so make sure it's all nice And the fabric, when you're working with knit, it likes to curl up on you, so sometimes you just need to be patient. <laughs> and if you want to press, depending on the fabric that you chose, um, you can, of course, have your iron out and press everything. And if you want to even starch your fabric, if it's a really curly fabric, I've had some knits that are really, you know, they just don't want to listen to you. Um, you can starch them up, press them, and then all these little steps here won't be as annoying. So this is how it should look. So I'm going to do the next one. Do that one super quick. And then we can install the cuffs. Okay, so now we're going to sew with our serger and put these little cuffs on. It's kind of hard at first to get it in the machine. So you have clips and pins, but once you get going, then it's easier. I'm going to try not to stretch my fabric when I'm doing this. And I just do a little bit at a time. Hopefully you can see that. And then just adjust. how it should look and I'm just going to pull out my cuff and make sure that I caught all my layers and almost but pretty darn good <laughs> so I'm just gonna do the second pant leg super quick Okay, so we have both of our pant legs done. So this is how they should be looking. We're gonna take one of them and we're going to turn it right sides out. Oh my God, you can see how things are coming along. Looks so good. I love the black at the bottom. Okay, so we're going to line up the crotch seam, which is the seam that goes from your belly button to your butt crack. <laughs> and we're going to 
open it up and we're going to make sure that you have the lower area so as you can see like this is the hip so we're going to attach this to the same one but to make it easier I like to take the pant leg and we're going to put it inside of the other pant leg. You don't need to put it all the way down, just put it in a bit just so that we can get the crotch lined up. I'm going to take my clips and we'll take that crotch area and we'll put those seams together, those seams you want pretty bang on. That again will make for a nice garment and then we just kind of go up the front and up the back. Like that all the way up. And go back to the crotch and then we'll go up the other side. And we're almost finished. Once we're done this we just do the waistband and the technique for the waistband is so easy it takes no time at all. I wish I knew these waistbands years ago because I even used the same technique when I was making um, flannel pants too. So now we're just going to sew that and then we can move on to the waist waistband. So now we can just take the pant leg out. And you can see the crotch area. And if you want to turn it right sides out, you can do that. <clears throat> Hopefully your plaid uh, looks okay coming together. <laughs> uh, the back looks better than the front. Oh well, that's okay. Um, so now we're just going to, we're just going to snip little triangles into where the hip is because we already have the centers of the crotch and the back because of our seam but we're going to just put two little notches there and then we'll take our elastic and we're going to put it on the inside of the fabric it doesn't matter which way you do it just as long as it's on the inside and we will kind of line up the notches and the seams with those markings, those quarter markings we made on our on our elastic. So there will be a, a small amount of stretching that we will do while we sew. So things aren't going to line up. So as you can see, it's kind of sagging there and that's because we're going to be pulling on the elastic 
so that it um, is the same size as the fabric. And then that will give it a little bit of um, a gathered look. And then your elastic will, you know, stretch and be a little bit tighter on their waist. So now we're just going to put it into our sewing machine. Kind of try to start at one of the markings. I'm just gonna get started first. And then I'll go to the next marking and I will pull um, the elastic until it is the same size as the fabric and try not to cut because you have the blade there trying not to cut your elastic as you go and when you get down to your next clip just trying to unclip again just try to get over the hump of that elastic there we go and then I'm going to the next clip and then I'll pull again <clears throat> take the next clip off pulling again the last one. <clears throat> All right. So this is how it will look. And sometimes that is a look. On some pajamas you may have seen that is the look but we're actually gonna take it and folding keeping it on the inside we're gonna fold it again and then we'll do a top stitch along the bottom of the elastic and then that will kind of create the casing look and then we'll have our finished waistband. I'm gonna be using my regular sewing machine for that part. So I'm just gonna start at the back. And you'll know which one the back is because the back is a little higher. And if you wanted to add in a little piece of a ribbon, um, you can do that now or you can do that later. I usually just take, like to take sort of a, like, just like a grow grain ribbon or something like that, just to put a little piece there and then that'll give them something to, so they know um, what's the front and the back when they go to get dressed. I'll do that second, but I'm just going to get started. I gotta press the right pedal. I got two pedals under me. Okay. And I'm just gonna stretch it. So that the elastic is the same. Just basically take out the wrinkles. Okay, so they're done. 
and they're so cute I absolutely love this pattern and it is so great because it's free so definitely if you have never checked out Ellie and Mac patterns you have to this is so easy um, and I really I don't consider myself an advanced sewer but um, just getting out the serger and flying through projects can be so fun so you can fold up the cuffs when they're little and then as they grow especially with like for my son he his his hips don't grow but his legs are growing so you know that's perfect because you know he's gonna be fine up here for a while but then eventually you start to see his ankles so now we can fold down the pants so I hope that you enjoy this tutorial and um, like I said I'm going to be doing a series of pajamas I'm going to be doing all the pajamas inside this uh, pattern from Ellie and Mac so you can check that I'll have a playlist this is my first one so of course I don't have any others out right now but these are the first ones that I made him out of another plaid and he loved them he's just obsessed with them but I need to make the shirts now so we'll make the shirts together so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial of course don't forget to give me a thumbs up don't forget to comment down below and if you go over to Ellie and Mac tell them I said hi and um, yeah see you guys in my next tutorial bye guys